Okay, guys, welcome back down to Carbon Car Systems. Today, I'm gonna to be running you through how to install this. This is the Kenwood wireless adapter. It allows you to mirror what's on your phone on the Kenwood units uh, wirelessly, okay? So we showed you a video of this later, uh, sorry, earlier in the week on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel and showed you how to operate it. It's a really, really cool device, but we're actually gonna show you how to wire that and most importantly, how to update it to the latest firmware because it is a little bit tricky. So we're gonna step you through that as well. Um, these are available on our website, Carbon Car Systems, or you can buy them anywhere around the world. They will work on majority of the new Kenwood units, all the display units, uh, DVD players, touchscreens, um, it has to have the HDMI input on the back because that's how it will uh, send the video signal to them. Uh, very cool device, um, well worth the money. I think retail in Australia is about $129 for the retail. Uh, we've got it on sale at the moment for about $69, but you know, around about $100, they're not too bad. Um, this is the unit we're going to show you on today. This is the Kenwood DDX uh, 916 widescreen. This is on a Toyota 86 that we're doing the install on. Um, it's going to be virtually the same for all the uh, Kenwood units. Like I said, it'll work on virtually all of them. We're going to show you step by step how to quickly wire. It's very simple, but firstly, we'll show you what's in the box. Um, okay, so this is how you get and what you get in the box. Uh, very simple. There's only two components in it. They actually come wrapped in plastic. We've um, already taken the plastic off. Two parts to it. This is the first part. This is the wireless receiver and the HDM, HDMI input that goes into the back of the stereo. And on here, there is a micro USB. So this is just for the other component that comes in the box, which is just the power source, okay? So this will go to accessories and earth, and we're gonna show you how to wire that. Um, and on the other end, it's got a micro USB, and this will just plug in. Now, this will all mount behind the stereo, so you're not gonna actually see any of this. It will work, it creates a little Wi-Fi network in here, so you can mirror from your phone back and forth. Um, very important though, stay tuned and, and keep watching for the firmware update because uh, especially Apple uses the, the latest iOS 10 update for, for the operating system and needs the update to work, but this will work for Android Auto for, or Android phones as well. Um, so, we're just gonna quickly chop the video there and we're gonna come back and we'll show you us uh, wiring it on the car. Okay guys, we're down here in the car. This is a pre-wired system. We've actually already done the wiring on this vehicle. This is, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, Toyota 86, so this is all the plug-in harness. This is the main power harness that goes into the back of the stereo. Now, it is very, very simple. All you're gonna need is the black, which is the earth, and the red, which is the accessory power. That's on the stereo loom, okay? Not the car, the colors on the cars all vary, but this is the stereo side. And this is as simple as going red to red, black to black. So this is really not the tricky bit. Uh, we're gonna show you that quickly as well. We're just gonna solder that up. Make sure you do one at a time so you're not gonna short things out, okay? So just strip that up. You can use um, scotch locks if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's it never sort of clipped through properly. Um, we always recommend soldering. So if you just give us a sec, we're just gonna quickly uh, show you. Uh, we'll solder this one quickly and we'll do the other one off video just to save save video time. There's no point watching a solder. Um, we use factory Tessa tape, okay, to loom things. You can use normal electrical tape. We use Tessa tape because it, it's a factory cloth tape. Um, it's a really nice way to go. Uh, it's not too expensive. It's about $5 a roll. It's a little bit more expensive than electrical tape, but it leaves a professional look and feel. So this is the cloth tape. I have it around my hand as well because I cut myself a little bit earlier. So please excuse my messy hands. Uh, but there, you can just solder that up. So there's the uh, red, the power, and the accessory power. And we're quickly going to strip the other one as well. And we're going to solder that up. Okay, so that's as simple as the wiring is going to go. We're going to loom that nice and neat. We're going to solder that one. And now we're going to show you the part on the back of the stereo quickly as well. So that's just the two components. You can do them uh, one step at a time. Pretty easy. But now I'm going to switch over and show you the back of the stereo and quickly show you that video as well. Okay, guys. This is the back of the stereo. We thought we'd quickly show you this because it can be a little bit tricky. Um, or you just want to notice it at first, you'll eventually see it. But you need to get the HDMI input on the back of the stereo. We're going to show you on this Kenwood unit, the DDX916 that we're demoing on because it's in here. So it's a little bit hard to notice at first. Um, this is the part that we're doing. This is the, the wireless receiver part with the HDMI. And you, you can look in there and it's just these two little screws. You're just going to undo them um, very quickly and easily pull the bracket off plug the HDMI in, and then return the bracket. It's actually a cool little system because it, it will actually hold the cable in its spot. And um, 
excuse me while I quickly undo this. So you just pull that out. So it's as simple as just pulling that little bracket off. HDMI input, you'll notice it. It can only go in one way. Just give it a big, bit of a jiggle and you'll line it up. There you go, in its spot. And the bracket can go back on. It actually holds the cable in place. So it's actually a neat little design by Kenwood. It's not like that on all the units, but we thought we'd show you on this one because um, we do a ton of these and it was a little bit tricky the first time. If you're doing it yourself, you, you probably won't notice it at first. It'll take you a little while. Um, but that's it. And, and that device, uh, like I said, will plug into the wide part we showed you earlier in the video. Um, and now we're going to go through and quickly show you how to do the firmware update as well. Okay guys, this is the important part of the video. This is the firmware update and it's important to the Apple users because you need this update to work on iOS 10, which is the latest operating system. We're going to show you on the Samsung phone, but it is the same on, um, on your Apple phone. It's just different interfaces. So first step is go to mirroring on your unit. Now, agree to this caution thing. It's just a, a quick warning. Make sure your vehicle is on. You do not want this powering down while you're doing the update. So make sure your car is on because it will brick the unit. Um, go into the Wi-Fi settings of your phone. Now, it'll come up with the KCAW100. So there it is there. Oh, sorry, I just hit the wrong button there. KCW. So, and the password is 128. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, this one there. 7, 8. And connect, okay? It will say it on the screen, so you don't have to forget it. It will say password. 1, 2, 3. 1 to 8, really easy to do. It'll say connecting. It is now connected. Now, once you're connected to that unit, you're going to go to your web browser and type in this IP address, okay? It's on the screen. You cannot forget it. It is uh, straightforward. 192.168.49.1. We typed it in earlier, so we're just going to go to that address now. It will load up. This is a small screen here. It's a little bit hard to see. We do have PDF instructions, so we can actually show you this as well. The first step is the top left-hand corner, the Wi-Fi button, okay? You want to connect to that and click scan. Now, like I said, we got a PDF um, document for all this step-by-step, -step, but it's easier to watch the video. Um, we're going to show you quickly how to do that. So that will actually search. So this is bookmarks, sorry. So it will scan for any networks in the local area. So we go back here, and we're just going to connect to our, our local network. This is at our store here, Carbon Car Systems. Um, and you're going to put in your password. So this is basically connecting it to the internet so that we can actually do the update. So type in your Wi-Fi password. So I'm just going to quickly do that. So obviously you have to be connected, uh, sorry, within an area that has a Wi-Fi or internet access. Okay, so there you go. It's come up connected to Carbon Car Systems. Now we can click back on the mobile phone. So top left corner, you'll just go back. Now, back on this screen, we're going to do the update. So firmware update dongle will be connected to. Click submit. Click OK. And it'll say on the screen here, new update found. So you actually can see it on the screen. It just says new update found. And it'll start downloading, okay, as you can see there. Um, you now need to let that download take a couple of minutes, so it's already at 50%. And then it will start doing uh, installing the update for you as well. So this has got disk one, it'll erase, write and check, and it goes through all this. So this is why it is important to do it with the car running, so that you don't brick your unit because it is updating as you go. Once that is completed, then you can actually mirror. And it should just work straight, off, straight away. You can actually disconnect from um, the this page here and you can actually just mirror it you connect to the essentially the Wi-Fi the, the dongle in the car and we'll quickly show that to you as well so this will just run for a couple of minutes and then when it's finished this is um, what will happen is it'll actually shut down so it's actually resetting so it's like once it's been installed it'll reset and start up again so we're just gonna let that go we're gonna cut the video there and come back and show you how it actually quickly works but we did have that in an early video as well so that, that's the firmware update a little bit tricky step by step watch the video or we'll put on our website on one of our posts how to update it. We'll put a PDF document up there for you guys as well. But not too bad, but just a little bit of practice and patience. Okay, guys, once the unit has reinitialized and restarted, it'll come back to this wireless mirroring screen. So you can see that there. On the Android, guys, you're going to have to go through your wireless quick connect settings and choose the actual dongle. It'll come up, KCAW100. So we've previously connected to this, but 
KCA W100 here, and then you can do Smart View, and that will mirror your screen. It'll just connect up quickly. Um, it contains its own little wireless uh, IP address, so you're going to have to disconnect any other uh, Wi-Fi you've connected to it. But I mean, let's face it, you're going to be driving around, um, so it'll it'll mirror your screen orientation. So you can see there, that's actually just mirroring as you, you switch things up. And you watch videos, YouTube, whatever you got on your on your on your screen or your phone. Um, for the Apple users, you're going to have to swipe up from the bottom of your screen and turn Apple AirPlay on, and it will do the same thing. So a little bit of glare off the screen there, a bit hard to see, but. Basically, that's how the uh, mirroring will work. Um, pretty cool little setup. It, it is a little bit fiddly to get set up, but once it's running, really easy to use. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. But like I said, I'll put all the information on, on our webpage, uh, carboncarsystem.com.au, and we'll put a PDF, step-by-step -step instructions, all you have this video. All right. Enjoy, guys.